everybody welcome welcome thank you all for coming today to our memory fox webinar oh we got lots of people coming in right now so exciting oh yes lots of people coming in how exciting okay well um happy belated valentine's day to everybody i feel like um we don't celebrate that holiday long enough. I think we should celebrate it more often. And I love that, especially in nonprofit work, we can, we can, uh, you know, make our donors our valentines or our sponsors our valentines and our uh, community members. So I just love that. I hope you guys all had a wonderful, are all having a wonderful February so far. We've got lots more people joining us, but thank you so much, Tammy, for joining us today. Um, this will be our first Memory Fox webinar of 2024. So it's really wonderful awesome. that you have, um, yeah, well, thank you so much for coming. And I'm going to go ahead and let you share your screen, but we are just so thrilled to have you here. You were talking about literally our favorite topic, which is video <laughs> messaging. We couldn't be more excited about any other topic. We talk about it constantly and it's so exciting that um, more people, especially people that have great insights like you are also gonna talk about video messaging. I love it so much. Um, I'm gonna just keep admitting people, but um, that's all I have. Again, thank you all for joining and Tammy, I'll let you take it away. Awesome, thank you, Carly. And thanks everybody for being here. I would love to see your faces uh, if you're comfortable in um, sharing your video, it'd be nice to see your faces and just drop in the in the chat where you are connecting from. What's your what's your home city? Where are you? Let's kind of get related today. Here we go. Now I can see my chat. So we've got Brianna from Los Angeles and Marissa from San Diego. So California is in the house. How about others? Oh my gosh, we ha have Gunner from Vienna. Vienna, mm, one of, on my bucket list. Uh, Carly's from Rochester, New York. Beautiful Rochester, as is Rosanna. Natalie's here, more California. Hey, Natalie. Oh, Pittsburgh. Excellent, thank you, Tricia. Well, I hope, I hope, I hope you're all uh, having a great February and maybe just maybe there's a little sunshine in your world today. It's a little gray, a little cloudy in Detroit today, but you know what? Being with you, our hearts are warm, right? And we're going to be talking about video messaging and how to share stories through video. And so I know that that will help make up for any cloudiness that we might have in our lives right now. All right, so I'm going to jump in. And I've invited to Carly and Natalie to just chime in if they are so inclined. And certainly we're gonna save some time for Q&A. Whoops, there we go. All right, so I wanna start with a quote from Jamie Ford who is a prolific novelist. And he says, seeing isn't believing, feeling is believing. And I am of that same mindset. We can talk about the facts and the stats, we can, share email messages, we can even send text messages, but video, I mean, to bring those stories to life, to share the impact, to really let our supporters, whether they be volunteers or donors or, or community partners, to let them know how they're making a difference, to communicate with them in a way that doesn't just give them information, but truly touches their hearts right? Gives them all the feels. That is truly um, when we move, when we move hearts, we move minds, because I'm a believer that we are basically um, emotional donors looking for logical reasons to justify our emotional decisions to give, whether that's time, money, expertise, influence. I do believe that feeling is believing. And so we're going to talk all about that today. So uh, what we're going to cover, this is loosely our agenda. We're going to talk about why video and text messaging are smart strategies. We're going to talk about what donors want 
what they want to know and how video can help deliver what they want. I'm going to share some fun examples from the work that I do um, with different clients across the country. And I hope that those will inspire you uh, to and inform how you create your video messaging. And you may have some even better ideas that you can share when we're doing some Q&A. Uh, I also then, of course, want to give you some uh, resources and tools and advice on how to scale gratitude and to scale video messaging, video storytelling. And here's the, the given. I just want to state the given. And that is, if you are going to, you know, automate email, if you're automating uh, texting, whether it's texting videos or emailing videos, if you're going to be um, emailing, automating the, that process, you need to have opt-in permission from your supporters, right? Where there are spam laws, there are guidelines that are established, and we need to follow those guidelines. All right, so uh, that is a given and, and it, with everything that I'm going to talk about. All right. So why is video and text messaging of video? Why are why are those smart strategies? Well, according to Forbes, 95 percent of a uh, of a message is retained, like 95 percent of people retain a message when it is conveyed to us on a video compared to just 10 percent if we're reading something. So video has a higher retention rate from the viewer. Also, if we're adding videos to our email, it can increase click through rates by 300%, right? And that's what we want. We want that engagement. We don't want just people ignoring our videos and our email messages or not clicking through, not reading what we're sharing with them. And so we know that if we can include a video in that message, they are 300 times more likely to to view that, that video and to open that email. That's why actually having the word video in the subject line also has uh, contributes you to having a higher open rate. Uh, including video links in your email can decrease unsubscribes by 26%, right? It breaks my heart a little bit every time someone unsubscribes from my list, right? Because again, just like you, I wanna provide optimum value uh, and when they unsubscribe, they no longer get that communication because those are the rules and we follow the rules. Short form video. So short videos rank number one for lead generation and engagement, according to HubSpot. Text messages overall have about a 98% open rate, 98%. And in fact, 88% of people say that they use their cell phones. The number one way that they use their cell phone is for text messaging. And even, even me, of a slightly older demographic, I send more text messages on any given day than I make phone calls from my cell phone, right? So again, this may be the same for you, but um, texting is, um, is the top reason why 88% of people use their mobile phones. 85% of people check a text messages uh, within five minutes of receiving it. Right, we hear that ding within five minutes, we're reading it. Now, even for matures, so 70 and older, they read those text messages on average within 11 minutes. So we pay attention to text. 51% of consumers reply to text messages within one to two minutes. And 65 to 85% of us are visual learners. And so not only do we retain more, but we comprehend more when we are receiving communication through video. So for all these reasons and so many other reasons, video and text messaging that and that combination are a really smart strategy. Now, video and emailing, also a smart strategy, but notice the common denominator and that is video. All right, so what do you want your supporters to know feel or do in response to the video message or whether again whether that's an email or a text message so when we're crafting these donor communications we want to have a clear outcome a clear call to action in mind when we're crafting them what do you want the person receiving that communication to know feel or do 
as a result of seeing that. So do you want them to, to know what kind of difference they made? Uh, do you want them to feel seen, heard, or valued, right? And that's what we learn from philanthropic psychology. We Donors want to know, not just donors, people, humans, whether they're giving money or time, the people in your community, they want to know that they matter, that they are making a difference. And preferably, they want to know specific information. They want to specifically know what kind of difference they are making with by themselves or with along with others. So they want to feel seen, heard and valued. They want to know that they matter. They want to feel a sense of community, a sense of belonging. And so we want to make certain that our messaging conveys that to them from time to time or even every time. We maybe we want to give an update on the specific program or component of the mission that they care the most about. And of course, to do that, we need to know what that is. And there may be even a call to action. We may want them to do something, whether that's give, give again, um, volunteer, advocate, spread the word, right? There could be multiple calls to action, but we want to make certain that there's clarity about what we want them to know, feel, or do as a result of this communication, of this video. So clarity. So in order to deepen relationships through video messaging, there are just so many different ways that we can do that. So of course, personalized thank yous. You know, thank you, Tammy, for your care and compassion for the children we serve, uh, your gift of, your in-kind donation, the time you spent volunteering at the back to school drive, um, your um, contribution, the time you spent on that scholarship award committee, unbelievable, changing lives. So personalized thank yous. Maybe you wanna use a video message to celebrate a special occasion, my birthday, an anniversary, you know, the birth of a new grandbaby in my family, or maybe, Maybe it's a special occasion for the organization and because they are part of the community, your community, maybe you want to let them know our 85th anniversary is in May. You may want to let them know that we have just named a new board chair and we want you to meet them. So some kind of special occasion or milestone event in their life or in the life of your shared community. Maybe you want to send a video message that's showcasing impact, right? Whoops, look a little ahead of myself. Maybe you have an exciting announcement to make, or you want to give a behind the scenes glimpse or kind of a, um, you know, a sneak preview of something that's coming up uh, that will be available to the broader community. But because they are such an important part of the family, you wanted to hear, you want them to hear about it or to see a sneak peek of it first. Maybe you are hosting a virtual or a hybrid event and you know they either couldn't be there and you want to give them just a little snippet like you're here in spirit and I wanted you to see or maybe you're doing a thankathon and rather than smiling and dialing and leaving lots of voicemails maybe you're asking your volunteers your board members to stand in front of a tripod with a, their iPhone or Android, taking a video, thanking them, and we're texting those thank you short thank you videos out to our supporters. Maybe it is a wish you were here. You know, here we are um, at, I have this wonderful organization, they are a hospice uh, care center in the southeast part of the United States. And for example, they have a grief camp for children who have lost a loved one. And coming up in the next couple of weeks, there's the the big send off where the kids will all pile onto the bus to go to this overnight grief camp. And so supporters are invited to come and they do face painting and they have some fun as the kids get on the bus. And of course, the kids are a little scared. They're a little excited, but maybe one of your supporters who loves camp can't be there. And so, you know, I'm taking a, a video and I'm saying, you know, Kathy, 
I know that you always love coming to the big, um, you know, grief camp send off the camp brave heart send off and you couldn't be here this year, but I wanted to give you just a glimpse. Look at those nervous little smiles and those sweet faces, you know, tr transformation and healing is at just ahead for them this week. And that's because of you. Um, maybe it's again, board members calling, maybe you're casting like a big, hairy, audacious vision and you want to give them a glimpse into it. Um, again, maybe you've got more volunteer opportunities or you're showcasing collaboration with other nonprofit partners, whatever it is, video is one of the fastest, most compelling ways that we can communicate that if we are thoughtful, if we're intentional, and if we can provide clarity and a little bit of emotion, right, to really make it feel special. So people feel, they feel the work, they feel the connection, they feel Honestly, they feel your love. Okay, so of course, to customize, to you know, to give them an update on their favorite program, you kind of need to know what that is. So here are some of my favorite discovery questions. Now, ideally, this set of questions I typically use when I'm sitting down face to face with supporters, but they can be adapted for surveys, for polls, for small focus groups, right? You can adapt them. So let me just run through these questions just to give you another set of tools. So the first one is, how did you learn about the importance of giving? Who taught you how to be generous? You know, so it might be my grandmother, or it was my father, or maybe, you know, I was that kid who needed help and I learned this on my own because of the kindness of people who poured into me and I wanna pay it forward. So understanding people's, um, their origin story related to their generosity. What are your proudest moments with us? Maybe it's the send off when the kids get on the bus and they go to Camp Braveheart for a week to heal from you know, the grief and loss that they're feeling. What are your biggest regrets? Or maybe if you've had a disappointment with us over the years, that's really important to know too. What part of our work interests you the most and why? Is it the foster care program? Is it the, um, the work that the Children's Center does with children diagnosed with autism or other neurodiverse uh, diagnosis? Like what is it about our work that you love the most? So then I can customize my video, my engagement, my impact reporting, my video storytelling in ways that I know are going to resonate and be the most meaningful to you. And honestly, if I put this into my CRM as a searchable field, I can segment and begin to scale some of these stories and these, you know, these video impact reports. Tell me about your most meaningful giving experience, whether that was giving your time or expertise or influence or your financial support. Maybe ask what's the most special way you've ever been thanked or acknowledged for giving. When it comes to nonprofit organizations, who does it best and why, right? So what are the characteristics? Maybe it's a survey and there's 10 characteristics and you ask them to pick the top three or to stack rank those characteristics. Transparency, um, you know, um, big thinking. What is it about that organization that makes them the best. What do you want to accomplish through your giving, right? So again, whether it's face-to-face -face or in other formats, we can kind of get to the essence of these and it makes that video storytelling, that video rep uh, impact reporting that much more personal and that much more meaningful and will generate more of those feels because feeling is Believing. I mean, can I get an amen in the chat on feeling is believing? Yes. All right. I've got Carly and Natalie. 100% Natalie says, love it. All right. Going to keep moving. All right. So as I said, these can be personal conversations, small group gatherings, surveys, polls. Maybe you're just looking at your data analytics. You're noticing gosh, when we send out these emails or when we send out this newsletter, people click through like these individuals mostly click through on stories that feature 
uh, family reunification through foster care, or these particular people click through, they always open when the subject matter is X. Because for most of you, you're doing multiple things under the umbrella of your mission. So it's super helpful to understand what attracts specific donors. Where do they click through? Where do they engage with you? On the website, in your e-newsletter, in your emails, um, even in your social media. So that, again, you can begin to zero in what is most impactful and interesting to them. And that means we also need to invest in fundraising intelligence, um, right? So being able to sort and look at our marketing, look Google Analytics, um, looking at our CRM, um, having looking at our marketing, and of course, investing in systems that where we can collect, organize, and share video, like Memory Fox. Right? It's so important to have an infrastructure and a strategy for for really mobilizing and scaling your video storytelling or your video communication so that it is strategic. It's not haphazard. So you can get the greatest return for the time that you're investing, the time that you're investing. And I'm talking about return on investment. I'm also talking re about return on relationship, right? And those are two completely different measurements. One is about the money and the other is about people. So how are you maximizing your return on relationship? by honoring them, looking at what, how they engage with you, and then serving up more of the information that they want, that they are interested in, that they have feelings for. All right, so here's what donors say they want, according to Penelope Burke, and of course her extraordinary research through her company, Cigna Supplied Research. Now she retired a couple of years ago, but they continue doing incredible work. And their research boils down to you know what donors say they want? Donors say they want to know that their gift made a difference. They want to be thanked promptly and accurately. And of course, we're going to issue a, a gift uh, receipt, if you will, a gift recognition letter. But there are ways to also scale a video thanks above and beyond. You know, that letter is essentially required by the, U the, the IRS here in the United States. I'm not sure what Vienna requires, but here we need to generate a gift acknowledgement letter stating the amount of that gift and any um, fair market value if there was any goods or ex or um, goods exchanged for that. We need to you know net that calculation out. But the point is, if if the gift was more than two hundred and fifty dollars, that letter is a requirement. So it's like that's the entry cost. That's the ticket to even play in the philanthropy game. How do you differentiate yourself from other donors? Or, I'm sorry, other organizations thanking donors? Video thanks could be one of the ways that you differentiate yourself. So being thanked promptly, accurately, donors want to know that their gifts are sincerely appreciated, right? So again, video thanks is one way that you can absolutely do that. And I have some examples to share with you. They want to be kept informed about their specific program interests. They want to feel special, unique, and valued either as an individual or if it is a, a family affair, if there's generational giving, if they are giving through a donor advised fund and they mobilize their family, they gather their family to help make those giving decisions, they want to be recognized for that. Their family is important and they want to teach, they want to carefully teach, you know, the generosity within their family through the generations. And so a nod to that is says, I see you. I understand you matter. You are making a difference. And here's how you and your family are making a difference. All right. And certainly, we all want referrals. We want our most generous supporters, our most loyal supporters to introduce us to people within their circle of influence. We wanna grow our base of supporters. And they, quite frankly, they, donors, volunteers, won't do that if we don't take care of them. If they think they're gonna refer someone to get the same mediocre gratitude, mediocre treatment that we give them, like, no thanks. They're far less likely to do that unless we kind of up the ante 
on engagement, on reporting, on thanking. And video is one way that you can do that. It's one of the ways you can truly differentiate your organization from so many others who simply don't make the time and the investment to set up a system and an infrastructure and a strategy to effectively use video. All right, so I talk about personalized gratitude. Uh, I'm gonna just show this little video, it's so sweet. And then we'll talk about how, how you could use a video like this. This, well, you'll hear, this is uh, Sadie and I made a gift to um, Wild Birds Canada that she, and she asked me to make this gift as a part of um, one of her fundraising, one of her fundraising campaigns. There we go. I found it, I found it. Oh, look, it's a wild sponsor. Thank you, Tammy, for sponsoring me and the money that you donated goes to Bird Studies Canada. Thank you. Call, call. How sweet is Sadie, right? So she sent that to me because I sponsored her. I mean, I think it was like 20 or $25, but I love this. I mean, it's so endearing, it's so sweet, and it really made me feel special and appreciated. You could do a video like that for your sponsors, for first time donors, or maybe you've got specific giving circles or monthly giving, um, and you could send them a, a a note of appreciation for their ongoing loyal support. Maybe it's for legacy givers, uh, volunteers who just came and did a special project for you. Or maybe those volunteers who are there every week in your mentoring program, and they just don't get thanked enough for their commitment, for their loyalty, for their really their love and compassion for your organization and the work that you do. Really any giving in kind, and it could be segmented by area of interest, right? So you could be thanking them for supporting and caring about the children and families in your foster care program, for having such a big heart and so much compassion for animals who have been deserted, abandoned, who are in the shelter, healing, and waiting for their forever home, right? So again, you can personalize this to the donor and personalize it to your work and the area of your work that the donor cares the most about. This will set you apart. It will really have you stand out um, with your donors. Now, this woman, um, Dila Shea Strader, is amazing. She is the executive director and creative director for a, um, a organization in Detroit called Mosaic Youth theater and they work with young artists uh, middle school high school they work with these well even younger through camps but they work with these young artists but truly it's also a leadership program right so i did a fundraising effectiveness assessment for them and as a part of that assessment i made an online gift maybe it was a hundred dollars maybe 125 dollars and that same day i got this video message from dila Tammy, thank you so very much for your donation. I am full of gratitude. You continue to bless us with your generosity of spirit and your decision to walk alongside us and help us in our mission to create leaders and lifelong learners through transformative arts programming. I am very, very grateful for you and all that you do and all the ways that you are showing up with us, for us and community. And I hope that you are enjoying your week and that you're getting to spend some time with your grandson. Um, I look forward to talking with you very soon. Have a great day. Sammy. There we go. So not hard to do, took less than a minute. Uh, you could have a tripod set up in your office. You simply put your, your cell phone there and shoot that video quickly, right? So it really makes a difference. I'm gonna share another video. So again, we talked about special occasions. Now this is Liz, Liz Anderson with Life Path Hospice. And she and I were on a coaching call and she's like, Tammy, I just can't keep up. And I know you can relate. She's like, I wanna send all these handwritten notes. I've got a list of birthdays and anniversaries and a list of cards that I wanna get out. And it's, you know, it's so time consuming to write the note, to pull up their address, to 
put a first class stamp on it. I'm like, Liz, why don't you just try shooting a video? You have their t- their cell phones in your in your phone, right? Uh, yeah, if I don't have their cell number, I have their their email address. Fantastic. Just shoot a quick video, zip zip out the door. And so she tried it and it has been a huge time saver and more than that, it's also been received with such gratitude from her supporters. So I want to play this very sweet video that she shares. Um, This was a birthday greeting. Hi, Jolene, it's Liz Anderson from Life Path Hospice. Uh, Today's a very special day because it is your birthday. I hope you're up in Cashier Sapphire Valley enjoying some cool mountain air, but just wanted to wish you a happy birthday and thank you for all the ways you bless our mission. I hope it returns to you a thousandfold in the year to come. I pulled a pop-up wish card just for you, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, open your arms as wide as you can to receive all the miracles with your name on them. Ah, I love that. Well, you are certainly a miracle to us. Thank you for being our friend and for being a member of Hospice Women of Philanthropy. Have a great day. Happy birthday. (laughs) Again, how sweet, how endearing, how special right? So this could be something that you do for birthdays or maybe anniversaries or again, a a new baby or grandbaby in the family. Maybe it's your supporters give anniversary. And, you know, I remember being chief philanthropy officer at the Children's Center in Detroit and sending give anniversary cards and then eventually video messages. Like you may not remember, but it was five years ago today that you became a member of our Power of Possibilities community. And while you may not remember, we sure do. And when I think about how you've changed lives of children and families over the last five years, it literally, like it moves me, gives me goosebumps and I'm just so grateful for you. Thank you for your love and compassion for our families and our children, right? So it's that simple. Like Carly said in the chat, don't overthink it. Just speak from the heart. What I like to do is close my eyes and visualize them. Whom am I sending this message to? What do I want them to know, feel, or do as a result of this video message, right? And so I may think, like I pictured, you know, Dan and Patricia, and I say, you have the biggest hearts ever, right? So I'm acknowledging them, not their gift, right? Because that's frankly transactional. We start with relational. You have the biggest hearts ever. And it was five years ago today that you made the commitment. You joined the Power of Possibilities community. And I am so grateful, right? So give anniversaries, milestones, whether it's a milestone for the donor or for the volunteer or the community partner, or maybe it's a milestone for your organization and you're sharing the good news, right? So what do you want them to think, feel, or do as a result of this milestone message now you could see you could create that individually with people like liz did um, and like delache did or it could be one to many you know uh, i'm just popping in your phone or i'm popping in your inbox today to let you know xyz right so i'm not speaking a name and i could scale it i could send that to everyone and yet it still feels personal I'm not saying I'm popping in all of your inboxes. I'm saying I'm popping in your inbox. I was thinking about you today, right? And I was. All right, any kind of celebrations, awards, maybe you've been recognized as a best not managed nonprofit in your community, uh, a great place to work, or maybe your supporter or one of your corporate partners has been named a great place to work. Right? So you want to acknowledge those awards or key achievements. Hi, Jolene. Hello, Jolene. All right, so this one was a birthday message sent to me. And my birthday is on December 24th. So for those who celebrate Christmas, you know that's Christmas Eve. And Dila and her beautiful children on Christmas Eve sent me this birthday greeting. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy 
All right, so I can't carry a tune, but I love this message. I love the warmth of it. It was timely. It's endearing. Her youngest shaking that little finger, right? I mean, I've shown this, I don't know to how many people because it really moved me. It really touched me. And you sending a greeting of some sort, whether it's singing or not, will really make a difference for your people. So consider using video messaging to do that. These are simple things, but you know, and I think that they're, you know, they're common sense, they're common logic, like lo it's logic to reach out to supporters on their birthdays, but common sense, common logic isn't always common practice because our time is so limited. And just like Liz, like I don't, I can't seem to make the time to get the card out. Creating a quick, short video has a higher open rate than an email message. It's faster to create and it sets you apart. It's different. This is not yet mainstream. So it's again, another way to differentiate yourself. All right, I'd love to see in the chat if any of you are doing greetings for special occasions. Uh, and certainly are if you're using video to do them, let me just drop it in the chat. Yes, Natalie, their harmony was amazing. Well, she is the creative director with um, Mosaic Youth Theater. So she's uh, definitely a wonderful singer, as are her children. Yes, okay. With Bongiorno, Bongiorno, did I say that? Bongiorno, Bongiorno. Good, thank you, Gunner. Excellent. So. Let's be gunner. Let, let's send video messaging and video uh, messages for special occasions and awards and announcements to really engage our donors. All right. You could also use it from, from the field as appropriate, right? To give program updates or to showcase impact or to give a glimpse behind the scenes. So if you're an animal welfare organization and you can take some short video on a rescue where there are, you know, there's a, a dog fighting ring that's been broken up or where there is some, some animals or a farm or a puppy mill, you know, where there are deplorable conditions and abuse and neglect of animals, if you can do a short video, even from a distance, like we don't want to traumatize our supporters by showing too much up close and personal, but we do want them to know we are here rescuing, you know, 40, a farm with 42 animals that have not had access to clean water, to food, who have been sheltering in deplorable conditions. And we couldn't do this work if you weren't supporting us. And so we just thank you. Thanks for the love and compassion you have for not just your animals, but all animals. Thank you, right? Or um, here's another example I'm gonna show you from Delachey's organization. It's a little sneak peek uh, of a dress rehearsal. It's just another rehearsal, but it's a sneak peek. So you get the essence of this, right? Anything that we can do 
to show our supporters that they are special. You know, that they, their support, their generosity, the love and compassion they have for those that we serve is alive and well. That they're in their daily work, they're taking care of their families, they're doing their jobs. And through their support, whether that is volunteerism or financial support or leadership, that work, that they're, they are here with us in the mission. It is happening every day, thanks to them and others in the community. All right, um, some of you, if you've um, seen me present before, and I, I love monthly giving. I'm a, a giver, a monthly giver to about a dozen organizations, and one of them is World Central Kitchen. And here is just an impact video that they produce. So you'll notice this is a little more highly produced than Dila on her cell phone, but they're both equally effective. So again, to Carly's point, don't overthink it. Don't think I need to budget money for a film crew. You could, and it might make sense from time to time, but this phone is your film crew, <laughs> right? Don't think it has to be overproduced. So I'm gonna share this video from World Central Kitchen. And again, conveying the impact of the work that they do and that supporters like me and many others all around the world help make happen. Let's try to concentrate in what we're good at, which we've been keeping fairly simple because we do food. We do water, and that's what we do in emergencies. But then we even in emergencies, which emergencies do we respond? And we kind of said, okay, natural events, boom. Yeah, hurricanes, tornadoes, volcanoes. But now I cannot believe we are in the middle of a refugee crisis created by a war that should not be happening. And man, this breaks your heart. Breaks your heart. The war in Ukraine began on February 24th, and on February 25th, my colleague Sam arrived with 2,000 hot meals for people entering from Ukraine. Bananas are the perfect food. Why? Because you peel them, they're clean. The fruit that comes with its own container. There are seven border crossings between Poland and Ukraine, and we are serving hot meals at every one of them. We're also in Hungary, Romania, Moldova, as well as Ukraine itself, and we'll continue to grow as refugees continue to flee the country of Ukraine. Again, just a very powerful impact video that they sent to supporters. Um, they also sent a text message uh, announcing their World Central Kitchen cookbook, right? Which was an invitation to join a live stream. And I think that's worth messaging to mentioning too. All right. So of course, we, this whole session is about feeling is believing. And so it wouldn't be complete without a quote from Dr. Maya Angelou. And many of you, you've heard this quote, but it just bears repeating. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I believe that video messaging, video storytelling is the way to most effectively have people feel something. And I always say nothing happens until somebody feels something. All right. I have a couple, uh, a tool you can download here, just some tips and ways you can express gratitude using video and text messaging if you wanna scan that QR code. And while you do that, I'm gonna invite 
uh, Carly and Natalie to come back and we can answer some questions. We can take some comments. You may have some things you want to share. So let's just open it up. I love that. Okay. So you said that the thing we were going to learn in this session is how to give all the feels. And I'm just going to say, you gave me all the feels throughout this whole presentation. I was laughing at one point. I was smiling basically the whole time. Uh, I almost shed a tear during that Ukraine video. Um, you gave me goosebumps during the song. I mean, I have personally felt all the feels just in this presentation. So uh, feeling is believing. I, I'm, I'm a believer here. Uh, but yeah, I love this presentation. I think there was so many things that reminded me of the work that I've uh, done in the past and obviously the work we continue to do with video storytelling. Um, if anybody does have a question, we would love to answer it if you want to drop that in the chat. Um, but yeah, how? Um, what do you think, Natalie? Do you have anything that you'd like to share about the presentation? I couldn't get myself off mute there. Tammy, I just think you do such a great job of painting those really simple ways that people can engage their community that like don't require a lot of high thinking or strategy. It's just like, what are those touch points that are going to be relevant to your community? And so not only can you accomplish those through those simple birthday shares, anniversary, special occasions, those are really easy to do. Like you said, sometimes it just takes a minute to sit down and record a video like that. And that's going to make somebody feel really loved on a day that's meaningful to them. But some of my favorite ones were like um, that song and dance crew behind the scenes showing something happening in action. Like that requires zero lift other than just setting up a camera or having somebody who's on the sidelines have their camera, their phone was what I mean by a camera, nothing fancy, just the device that's already in your hand. They're probably standing there watching this rehearsal and all they have to do, you know, rehearsal or a project being built or whatever it is for your mission and your organization, just actually filming that real time and then sending that to your supporters to say, here's what like a behind the scenes peek of what's happening. That is a super easy lift. And like that made me feel connected to an organization that I'm not even familiar with, that I don't even follow. So that's a real great way to um, bring people in and make them feel like they understand what's happening, what you're doing in your day to day. And that's really how you build that genuine connection. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, those more organic videos really do feel genuine and authentic and not produced like, hey, I'm. I just heard this beautiful noise upstairs and I walked upstairs and our our young artists were rehearsing and I thought I would just grab a little snippet of it for you. Thanks for helping grow our young artists. Yeah, I think that's such a good point to um, also what you were saying, Natalie, but I think sometimes we forget that we are capturing that content anyway, and maybe somebody was going to film that video anyway, just for their own personal because they wanted to see it or they wanted to watch it again later and when you find yourself like you're a volunteer somewhere or you're somebody who donates uh, like Tammy I'm sure you've thought about this too like be sure that you send that video back to the organization too and let them know you know I captured this and you're welcome to use it if you uh, would like but um, I think sometimes we forget our community might actually already have that content and it might just be as simple as them sharing it back with you. Um, but I did see in the chat, we do have a question from John. He, uh, he has a question about what about sending a quick video from your executive director to your board of uh, trustees? John, I think that's a great idea. You know, sometimes we take our board members maybe a little bit for granted. And so just a, a, a video of appreciation, you know, maybe individually thanking them for something specific or, you know, as a group for their, their collective leadership. Um, I think that's a great idea. I love that. And I, I even wonder, so you said um, from an executive director, but I think maybe even sometimes our board, they want to be more connected with the community and the people that you're serving. And maybe if we even got a message from them to send to the board, um, even if it was just a thank you, like you mentioned, that would be Kind of fun. They might not always get the chance to see the mission in action. So that, that, that's a lovely idea. I love that. Yeah, really good. And of course, I mean, I, it, I'm going to state it, but I know, you know, that we are ethical storytellers. And so consent is paramount. 
So with these young artists, you know, they're performing in the community. They, they and their parents have given consent for us to video and for us to put their, their art out into the community. Um, you know, with the work that I did at the Children's Center in Detroit, which was a children's mental and behavioral health organization, you know, we could have never have done videotaping without um, a lot of more thoughtfulness, right? Because we've got children in foster care who absolutely cannot be photographed or, or videotaped. We have children who have experienced tra trauma. And so we would never want to violate them. We wouldn't want to reinforce stereotypes, like we've all the ethical things. Um, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't go in uh, after a monthly birthday party where there were 80 children and their families celebrating every birthday um, of a child being served through the Children's Center, every child in treatment in the month of February. And I couldn't do like a video of the space. Like, well, I'm part of the cleanup crew. And as you can see from the balloons, confetti and empty cupcake wrappers, there was a lot of fun had here today by children who, for some of them, this may be their only birthday celebration. And so because of your compassion and your love, you were here with us in spirit. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, even right? that is such a great, that's such a great example. And again, it's like not overthinking it, right? It's just thinking a, a little bit outside the box. But I, I also think um, that you can start getting used to brainstorming fun ideas like that, that will be really impactful when you really commit to building a culture of storytelling at your organization and getting everybody on board. And you start thinking outside of the box of those things that you don't, yeah, you don't need consent to show the balloons inflated on the floor. You don't need to do that, but um, you're getting the same message across and you're really showing your mission. Yeah. I actually just thought of another question that I wonder if maybe somebody in the audience might be thinking, but um, I think sometimes we talk about, well, you know, you and I, we're comfortable on video. It's what we're doing right now. But um, I think sometimes people might think, well, I could never do that. Or I can't be the one on video. How how am I possible? I don't have anything to say. So I don't know. Do you have like maybe a one or, or a couple tips of what's like the first thing somebody could do to get comfortable or to give it a try? So that was me. That was totally me. Like I would get on, I mean, I can speak in front at a conference in front of lots of people and feel completely comfortable. Something about a camera. It was so Zoom helped us, most of us get over that. But even before that, it was just doing it. You know, I would show up kind of stiff, like I didn't even sound like myself because I was trying to remember what I wanted to. Here's the thing just get, as my one of my good friends used to say, get out of your head. It's a bad neighborhood. <laughs> So when I shifted the focus from, am I saying the right thing? Do I look okay? When I shifted that focus away from me into, what do I want Dan and Patricia to know, feel, or do? What do I want them to feel as a result of this message? And when I focused on them, it just became a conversation. And it took a couple practices, but when I shifted from me to them, it became immensely easier. I definitely agree with that. I think that, you know, like you were saying, sometimes we can get wrapped up thinking, well, how do I look or what is, you know, what's my background look like or or what's my lighting look like? And those things, you know, there are, those things are important to some extent, but when you're thinking about the importance of the actual message, um, nothing's more important than making sure that the message that you wanted really did get out on that video. Yeah, yeah, it's all about them feeling appreciated, knowing that they're making a difference, feeling a part of the community, that sense of belonging. That's what's most important. Yeah, that actually reminds me that um, Natalie and I, sometimes we joke about um, when you're talking about like the mission in action, for example, we joke because um, one of our customers is the Arbor Day Foundation and they get a lot of great content from their volunteers, boots on the ground work. And we just kind of like to joke that there's, um, if you were gonna get a film crew perhaps to film something like that, that you you might have to plant and replant and unplant and replant the tree to get the right shot. 
but that's not obviously a good use of your time and it's not a good use of donor money. So um, when you actually can just think uh, more about the culture of storytelling and thinking about ca capturing it in the moment, um, you really only have to plant the tree once, which is what you're intending to do anyway. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I have a um, land trust that I work with and once a month their staff team goes for a hike together just as a team building. A oh, connection. I love that. And so they will shoot some video, but they'll also do some stills and the stills are incredible. They're just with, you know, the iPhone, but it's like the little fern prawn. It's like the little snail underneath the leaf. It's like just little bits or little signs of spring emerging, you know, because we are 60 degrees one day and 12 the next. There's like these little signs of spring emerging. So on their, I think they did a video from their winter solstice walk and it was beautiful, homegrown. And it just made me so grateful that they are preserving those spaces and made me like, I cannot wait to pack up my grandsons and go on a hike in the spring. I'm not, I'm not brave enough to take them on a winter hike. They're two and five, but the spring hike, I can do that. That's the perfect time because that's when the puddles are there and the mud and that's the fun time to walk. Yes, really exactly. <laughs> so Natalie did also say, she was wondering if you had any great ideas um, that you've seen similar to the sneak peek the, of the performance video that you played. Yeah, well, any kind of arts, you know, if you can get a sneak peek of a, of whether it's dance or, or, you know, orchestra, but for visual arts, maybe you are having a handful of supporters or a video combination, maybe you're going to do a video of the um, traveling exhibit being installed. I mean, that's Ooh. fascinating. If you've never seen that super interesting. Um, Maybe if you are, let's just think of another mission type, you know, like even at the Children's Center, we would have in the, as summer wound down, we would have back to school drives and then kids would come and pick up their age appropriate backpack stuffed with the school supplies that they needed. And so the behind the scenes, because again, we can't videotape our children at the Children's Center, um, it would be the volunteers stuffing the backpacks and it would be the you know the close-up of the Paw Patrol backpack and the um, blippy or you know whatever yeah. the <laughs> um, so those kinds of things maybe it was where you're doing a holiday shop for families to come and and shop for gifts for their children for their family members and it's it's the shop getting set up not the families not the parents or grandparents or guardians walking through and picking items for their youth, but it's the setup. It's the before the client engagement and or, and or after the client engagement. I right. love that. Yeah. Oh, At the time, yeah. <laughs> and now you got me on a roll. We also <laughs> had an art therapy program after school. And while I couldn't take pictures or video during the program, I would go afterwards and you know kids often will leave their art behind like they'll make three or four pictures and they'll take the one they want and i would take pictures of that and share it via you know like video even again the spattered paint i was and, gonna say the mess there would be uh that would i mean it'd be very pretty yeah i mean it, it's amazing there was one piece of art it was a piece of construction paper and they had taken strips of other colorful construction paper and <clears throat> wound them into little spirals and glued them on the flat paper. And when the therapist said, what is like, what does this mean to you? He said, that's what it feels like in my head. And it was just this mass of spirally pieces of construction paper glued. And so we took a, you know, I took a picture of that, a little bit of a, text story about what this young, young man said and then of course one of them like the actual one i framed up for a donor um, but we could scale it through video because it truly was one of a kind piece wow yeah, yeah that's really powerful and i think i know we're wrapping up but i think that that also 
is um, that kind of is a nod to this new concept that I've recently been learning more about, but even like you're saying, like telling the story of the object instead of the actual person. And um, especially when you were talking about like the, the backpack being packed, it's like, well, you know, that backpack's about to go on a journey. He's about to be the backpack that has to carry everything and has to be the support system. And, you know, kids, you know, to school, from school and uh, carry things and, and make sure that everything stays safe. I, yeah, I think um, if you if you think, if you set aside some time to really do some brainstorming, I think your whole team would have a million creative ideas. Yeah. And Carly, who can't relate? Who can't remember the thrill of fresh school supplies? Oh, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thank you. I mean, you all are amazing. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for leaning into visual to video storytelling. I cannot wait to see what you cook yep. up. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Tammy, for joining us today. I personally have learned so much today. I know everybody else has. I'm positive here on the call. Um, I'll be following up with the recording for everybody. And um, you'll be uh, hearing, uh, I'll send some other resources as well about getting started with video storytelling. And again, just thank you all for being here. It's uh, really been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Tammy. And you can catch Tammy at the Community Boost, The Unthinkable, as well as Memory Fox. We're actually going to be on the same stage. So that's going to be really exciting. You can just, you can just watch our stage and see us there. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Thank you, here. everybody. Thanks, everyone.